Hi, I'm Jamie Lewis, and welcome back to TheBasis.net. What I'd like to go over today is to show you how to play something that I like to call the target notes. So stick around, I guarantee you're gonna dig it. So target notes, what the heck am I talking about? Basically, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna learn how to hone in on specific targeted chord tones, hence the name target notes. Now, one thing I know that bass players struggle with all the time is getting away from always playing the root. Not that there's anything wrong with playing the root, sometimes that's what you have to do. But from the standpoint of like, how do I get more creative? What other options are there? Well, you could target the third, you could target the fifth, you could target the seventh. You don't have to just hone in and target on the root every single time. So my question to you is, can you do that? Can you play the thirds and the fifths and the sevenths? And I don't mean, actually, I just said, can you play them? I don't mean, can you play them? I don't mean, can you arpeggiate a chord? And like, oh yeah, there's a third and there's a fifth and there's a seventh. I mean, do you know them? I mean, do you know your chord spellings well enough to hit any of those target notes? The three, the five, the seven. Can you hit them at any given moment at the drop of a hat? Think of it like this. Just answer these questions for me. What street did you grow up on as a kid? Or just what's one, the first one you can think of? For me, I grew up on Sunny Glen in Moorpark, California, 93021. I will never forget that because I lived in that house for like 18 years. Uh, answer this one. What color are your eyes? Mine are brown. If you're married, what color are your spouse's eyes? My, my wife has bluish, grayish eyes, just depending on uh, what time of the day it is. Or how about this one? How long have you known your best friend? I've been best friends with a kid named David since kindergarten. Maybe even before that, but you know, memory is pretty hazy at that point in life. But we're still good friends today. Now here's the thing, I bring up these questions because you should just be able to answer these like the back of your hand. If you have to go, uh, I don't know when I met my best friend. Maybe it was first grade, maybe it was high school. If you can't answer that, I doubt he's your best friend. <laughs> if you can't tell me the color of your spouse's eyes, you might not have a very good marriage because you should just know some of these things. That, that, that's what I mean. And we live in a day and an age today where we don't know as much as we used to, but we have access to so much information. I can just pull up my phone and Google anything I want. But that quick two plus two is four, five is five equals 10, just as I know it, with, I would bet my life on it. That's how well you wanna know these targeted notes for all of your major chords, all of your minor chords. If you wanna get into it, you can go into diminished, minor seven, flat five and all that stuff. But if you just wanna cover like 99% of all music ever, have these target notes on lock for all of your major and minor chords. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So let me start out with just another really, really quick test, just so you can get an idea for where you are. Because here's the thing, I'll ask students this question all the time, like, hey, how well do you know your chord spellings? Or how well do you know your scales? And they'll go, yeah, I, I know that stuff, I'm good with it. Cool, spell a B minor seven chord. If you didn't go B, D, F sharp, A, I don't think you know your chords as well as you thought you did. Or uh, spell an E major scale. If you didn't go E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, I don't think you know your scales as well as you thought you did. Because here's the thing, again, like, I'm not talking about can you figure it out? Can you pick up your bass and go, oh, if this is B, all right, there's the third and there's the fifth. That's not what I ask you. I wanted to, do you know this stuff? The same way you know the color of your wife's eyes, the same way you know your best friend. Do you know this stuff? So hopefully you were able to answer those questions pretty quickly and pretty easily. And let me just say, uh, if you couldn't, then this lesson is going to be pretty impossible for you. So here's what I need you to do. Just go ahead and click on this link and check out Ignite Musical Training. It's a program I designed specifically for you to learn music theory and learn how to do all that stuff that I just said. It's actually very, very easy. It's not impossible. It's not hard. It won't take you long at all, but you do need to kind of study up. Because if you couldn't do, if you couldn't answer those questions I just asked you, you're not going to be able to do this exercise that I'm about to show you. So speaking of which, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna throw a chart up on the screen and we're gonna play through it together. I'll grab a bass, you can grab yours. The first time through, we're gonna target the roots. We're gonna play a total of four times in a row. First time, we're playing roots only. Second time, we're gonna play the thirds. Third time, we're gonna play the fifths. And the last time through, we're gonna target and play all of the sevenths. Don't worry about creating a bass line. Don't try to walk, add any passing tones or any licks. Just play the roots, the thirds, the fifths, the sevens. Let them be whole notes or half notes, however long the chord is. Don't worry about doing anything cool. That's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to see, can we target these notes comfortably? 
Now, jazz music is the vehicle that we're going to use today. And that's not to say that you can't do this with, um, you know, pop music or rock or blues. It's just jazz music has more to it harmonically. There's a lot more chords in a jazz song than there are in a pop tune. In a pop tune, it's the same four chords over and over and over and over again. Rock music and blues music, it's a lot of one, four, five, and mostly dominant chords, right? So with jazz, you're going to see minor sevens and major sevens minor seven flat fives and dominance with alterations and extensions. So there's just, there's much more for you to work out with here. So it's going to be a great practice tool. So just do your best and really, really be honest. Ask yourself, how am I doing with this? Am I comfortable? If so, cool, move on. If not, well, spend a couple of weeks here and really, really hone in on targeting these specific chord tones. Because again, this isn't just going to apply to jazz. You can use this in anything that you're doing, and the best bass players do. So go ahead and grab a bass. I've got mine, so we're all ready to go. Take a look at the screen. I'm throwing up a chart right now. Again, this is a very popular jazz standard. You might even recognize it, probably have played it before. And uh, if you want to hit pause for a minute or two and just kind of look over it and see if there's anything that you don't know how to do, that you don't understand, or anything you got to spell out on your bass, whatever, go ahead and do that right now. No problem at all. Um, the only thing I want to point out is there is a first and second ending, so we're going to do those top two lines twice, and then we're going to go on to the finish the rest of the chart, and then we're going to come back to the beginning. We're going to do that whole pattern a total of four times. Remember, the first time, roots only. Second time, thirds. Next fifths, and last, sevens. Ready? Here we go.
Mm-hmm. Okay, now, be honest with me. How'd you do? Did you get, uh, give yourself a grade. Did you get 100%, an A plus? I know I did, and I flubbed a couple of them. Uh, did you get a B, a C? Was it not even close? It's okay. Anytime I'm working on a new exercise or I just want an honest assessment of where I am, you have to be honest. If you're not, you're, the only person you're cheating is yourself. So if this was really, really hard for you, well, now you know what you need to practice. You've got something you need to work on. If there was a piece of cake, all right, you got it in the bag. Don't spend any more time on it. Move on to the next thing that I'm going to show you next week. Now, keep in mind, this is a fantastic skill to have, not just for jazz. Again, I mean, for jazz, it's kind of necessary, and it also makes it a lot more fun because it gives you a whole bunch of options, and that's what jazz is about. But look at it like this. If you're a bass player who has perfect command over every single note in every single chord at any given time, well, dude, that's a bass player that everyone wants on their team. If I'm a producer, if I'm a music director, if I'm a songwriter, whoever it is, if I'm hiring bass players, that's the guy that I want to bring on my team. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to just practice this for about a week, five minutes a day. And actually, I think this exercise was like four minutes and some change. So just run it one time, top to bottom each time. And if you've got the roots down and the thirds, but you struggled with fifths and sevenths, all right, well, just just do that. Just hone in on the parts that you need to work on. And next week, I'm going to show you how to take this a step further. Now, if you struggled with this, if you gave yourself a C or a B, you did not get an A, you did did not feel comfortable with this, here's what I want you to do. Click on this link, download the video file, the the, the chart that we just played to. Um, It's the exact thing, except I'm not playing to it. So you can practice it on your own. And spend like five or ten minutes a day working on it. If you do that for seven days, that's a half hour to an hour of clocking in time just targeting these specific notes. And you don't need to do the roots. You don't need to do the, if you did great at the thirds, okay, just work on the fifths and the sevenths. That's okay. But spend some time honing in on these target notes. I guarantee this is going to work wonders for your bass playing if you can master this skill. So that's it for today. I hope you had fun playing with me. Uh, I'm at Jamie Lewis on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all those places. So if you want to connect with me there, I'd love to chat with you. And if you enjoyed this video, please click on the like button and and share it with your friends. I greatly, greatly appreciate your support. So thanks again for stopping by and I'll see you next time here at TheBassist.net. Hey, if you like what I do, please click on the subscribe button right here. And if you really like what I do, then click over here to see how affordable it is to join me at TheBassist.net. But if you just want the free stuff, then click here to check out whatever YouTube's sophisticated robots think you should watch next. I'm sure they know what's best for you.